Coming up on ECG, Deadpool 2 falls behind on the CGI work. Our favorite rabbit Ronin hopping to TV. Google is taking a swing at the big three consoles. Some other trailers sort of happened. All this and more coming up on the East Coast Geek Podcast. Welcome to episode 123 of the East Coast Geek Podcast for Sunday, February 11th, 2018, where we bring you all the latest news on comics, movies, and gaming. I'm your host, Jeremy, and with me, as always, is Opu. How you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing pretty okay, I think. Pretty okay. Just maybe yeah. just okay. Maybe just okay. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like a Sunday afternoon, we gotta go to work tomorrow and yeah. do stuff. Yeah, I still gotta earn money for, you know, the real stuff we gotta do. Yeah, like buy stuff, like toys and things. Right, and games, Sea of Thieves, hint, hint. Yeah, yeah, Sea of Thieves. I gotta make sure I note that. Ma- March 20th. Like- March 20th. If anybody's out there looking to buy me something, March 20th. All March right. 20th. <laughs> All right, so uh, what have you been up to? Uh, I know you were playing um, some, uh, you are playing a good game this morning. Yeah, I was uh, playing Kingdoms of Armchair. Kingdoms, Am- Kingdoms of Amalur, okay. Kingdom, Kingdoms of Armpits, yep. Um, it's pretty good. I ha- I've had it for a little while, I just never bothered to play it, and so I'm just right at the beginning of it, only like level two, three ish. But I'm, I'm having fun. It was, it's definitely like a story that I really wish that had spawned into a franchise. Hopefully, somebody will buy the IP one day, and good things will come of it. But in the meantime, I'll just. <laughs> Play this, I guess. Well, you know, uh, I was I was messing around on PUBG this morning and last night, and that was a lot of fun. And uh, well, more division, <laughs> a lot more. I know. You can give me dirty looks if you'd like. I won't give you any dirty looks. the The important thing is you're having fun. A lot of fun. Uh, more fun than I originally had with that game. Uh, maybe that's what I have to do, is just wait two years to buy a game until it's all uh, straightened out and, you know, the way it should be. You know, with my current financial situation, that's pretty much my game, although unintentional. Right, right. Uh, so, uh, Overwatch League wrapped up this weekend for the uh, first first stage, right? Isn't stage one, saying? I'm assuming, going with the whole theme that they've got, you know, the best three out of four is that it's going to be four stages. In fact, you know... it's uh, to... Yeah, it's four stages, five weeks each. Mm-hmm. Then playoffs, grand finals, and then the All-Star weekend, which I assume is the mix and match. Right. Which I didn't know they were doing. I didn't pay attention to that before. So, uh, But, you know, grand finals is the, the end-all, be-all. I don't even remember. By the end of the four stages, one of the teams will have grabbed up about... if. It the potential of one of the teams to have grabbed up a uh, half a million dollars in prize money at the end of each stage, uh, if they had won every single week, or every single stage. I mean, sorry, because uh, the prize pool per the end of stage is a hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. So it's a nice little bonus. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, so how is your team doing? You're rooting for the Philly, Philly Fusion, right? They're uh, they're middle of the the road there. They're team number seven out of twelve. So I mean, that's not bad. They got that's shut out yeah. the first game of this week. They got shut out by Boston Uprising, who's number six. So yeah, uh, well, I mean they're they're doing better than my team, Florida Mayhem, which is the second worst team, but they're better than the Shanghai Dragon. So we're not. <laughs> you know, and I and I figured once I found out there was going to be a Florida team, I was like, "Oh, this doesn't. It's probably not going to end well." But I'm going to root for them. Yeah, but, but then, but at the same time, they're not homegrown players. Mostly, they're you know, it's, yeah. it's a draft. Hey, how you doing, Sunshine's Journey? Uh, thanks for saying hi from Chicago. Um, that's who needs a team. If they expand, Chicago needs a team. Chicago should get one. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people like there's not one for Chicago, so they've had to jump ship to uh, other franchises for the moment. Or uh, even some Canadian teams. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you it got would the be U- nice if... You got the UK mainland uh, 
well, Shanghai uh, and Seoul Dynasty are the international teams, along with, like I said, uh, London Spitfire. So, you think they would have had a Sweden team with as many uh, Swedish people they have on these teams? The like amazing, the, whole... the amazing crap is, is that California has three teams. Two of them being Los Angeles teams. I don't, I don't yeah. understand why there are so many concentrated there. Yeah, that's that's weird. Why? There, there should have. Yeah, they should have found other places I, to go. So they yeah. could even went. To, they could have went to Washington or uh, more northern California or other countries or Nevada or yeah. I mean, you could have went to Mexico, Australia. Uh, any Aust- of the any Aust- of the southern South American places too. Um, who plays a lot of Rainbow Six that I always play against? Yeah, but um, that's Rainbow Six. I know. I'm just saying, but they play first person shooters down there. Is my point, mm-hmm. and some of them are okay. really good down there. Um, my point is, is one team for California, and then spread the wealth. There. Yeah. I mean, I know yeah, Blizzard's sh- based near Los Angeles, but still, you could have spread it around. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that sentiment. Yeah, so they should probably just keep the Los Angeles Gladiators. The San Fran Shock should have went somewhere else. Maybe the San Fran, or the the, the Mexico Shock, and um, what's the other one? The, the Los Angeles Valiant should have been like the Washington Valiant or the Nevada Valiant. So yeah, why not Nevada? Because they gamble on everything. Or the Canadian Valiant, like yeah. the Montreal Valiant. Well, I guess or Ontario. I guess the other hope is is that once they see how successful it is, hopefully they are able to m- spread out the league some more, get some more teams involved, make it a little bigger. I mean, this is a third of what the NHL is as far as team size. So, yeah, yeah, and um, I would like to really. I guess it's a little early to pull all those uh, stats, but I'd like to see. How what the average viewership was? I know that first week it was uh, four hundred thousand for that first week for the first couple yeah. of days, and then it seems to have now that people have found the teams they're rooting for about a hundred thousand mm-hmm. per match. So and then comings and goings, but usually at about a hundred thousand per match. So it's not bad numbers. It's not uh, like Dota or League of Legends level for their big tournaments, but yeah. for the most part, I mean, for them to consistently get that four nights out of the week. That's not bad. That's nothing. To, no. nothing to shake a stick at. So, yeah. and I think you know, I feel like Overwatch as a whole still needs to expand a little bit more, um, a few more maps and a few more characters at least. Oh, they're working um, on that. I mean, and I know they're working on. It. I mean, they just introduced the Blizzard World map, right? Yeah, I wonder. I and and you know, these guys are playing on a previous version. They're not playing on the current right, right. the current version. So. They won't have that new map. Maybe they'll introduce that next year or something. Yeah, I, and that was one of the things I was wondering about. At the end, whenever they have their equivalent of the playoff, should they introduce a new map through that playoff? And that'd be kind of interesting to see, okay, they, they have this completely new scenario they have to play in. I mean, it, it'll still be one of the uh, basic, probably, um, escort the bomb or whatever the the plots are um, right and then just battle it out but it's a, a map they're not used to right and then you would see like how quick they can adapt their communication i think that would be a really interesting test you're saying you're for saying for the all-star game yeah yeah that would that would actually be really neat that would, that would be neat and uh i got a closer look i finally got in game and actually got a closer look at some of those skins we were talking about last weekend mm-hmm. they look really good like the the butcher roadhog looks awesome so yeah I really wish I would really wish like the skins I'd unlocked on the game already I could transfer. Why couldn't I do that one? Let's play anywhere. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's frustrating. It is, but at the same time, you'll they'll they'll you'll catch up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so. I'm not I'm not that worried about it either way. Right. Right. So all right. Uh, so uh, I guess stage two starts next week, and uh, yep. Oh no. Uh, it started two, well this week, you could say. Two week. No, it starts next week, the twenty first. Next week. Yeah, oh, so they 21st. get a What's... they get a week break in between the stages. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Maybe it gives uh, my team a chance to figure out what they're going to freaking do. <laughs> All right. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Atomic Puppet. Yeah. So I, I decided to uh, check this show out. It's on Netflix. I guess it's a 
either a Disney XD cartoon or it's a Netflix original. I'm assuming it's a Disney XD. So what it is, and, I, and I've seen it, you know, through the channels every now and then. I'm like, eh, whatever. So I, I pop it on, and it's very well animated, like brightly colored. Um, the characters move fluid. Pretty interesting characters. The br basic premise is the world's greatest hero, Captain Atomic, has been transformed into a hand puppet by a disgruntled ex sidekick. Oh, great. And now he can only use his powers if he merges or like put is put on by his number one fanboy. <laughs> and so he's still trying to juggle being a superhero while nobody finding out that Atomic Puppet is Captain Atomic. <laughs> great. On top yeah. Uh on top of, you know, of course trying to become Captain Atomic again. Right. You know? Interesting. Yeah, it's it said here it's uh Disney XD, so and it was done by Mercury Crap, I closed the window all of a sudden. Alright. Um I think it's a, a French uh a French Canadian endeavor. Uh, Mercury Filmworks, well. Technicolor Animation Productions, and yeah, Galmont Animation for Teletoon and X Disney XD. I bet you Teletoon's either French Canadian or French. Uh, yeah, Toronto, Ontario. So yeah. Uh, so, how's yeah, the animation so the, on it? Yeah, like I said, it's pretty fluid. Um, very, very vibrant. Do uh, all so the my daughter enjoys watching it. Do all the characters hmm. have uh, shadows? <laughs> uh, no, but it's designed in that way. Oh, okay, and it, okay. since it's comedy first and then it's like action second, then you know it fits for it. It's not like okay, this is supposed to be a superhero show, like where the characters are supposed to be detailed, especially with a costume as complex as Spider Man, where you need to be able to see the details on it and the depth because that whole that line thing that the webbing pattern he has really right. throws off your perception gotcha so with this one but no they're, they're uh like i said they're very well designed um very well animated action's pretty decent the only one of the biggest problems i have is the first episode they start off with is the classic like flu episode or sick episode <laughs> I am not a big fan of like gross out humor like that, like snot and stuff. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I just it doesn't appeal to me. It's never appealed to me, even as a kid. Gotcha. It's just so they have that, and I'm like, ah, that's not going to win any points with me. But uh, whatever, I'll, I'll push through it. I got. Gotcha. Yeah. So after after that, it was a lot better. If they they could have, it, so it wasn't really necessarily the strongest episode. It didn't even really set the premise of huh. the show that well. So it wasn't like the pilot episode. Or at least it didn't feel like it. I got you. Hmm. All right. Uh, well, do you want to head into the uh, the comics? Because uh, I'm kind of excited about this one. Sure, uh, let's go for it. All right, let's hit it. Here, uh, Here's a picture. Hey, look, it's uh, Usagi Yojimbo. Tell me about it. Tell me what's going on. Usagi Yojimbo. Um, it's being optioned for an animated TV series. Oh, by the same, uh, by the same uh, studio, by the way. Oh, uh, Gaumont. Oh, excellent. Well, wow, that's a nice segue. Completely <laughs> unintentional. Perfect. Unless it, yeah, <laughs> unless it makes us seem smarter, then it was totally intentional. Totally planned. So, totally planned. Everything on the show is completely planned. Ten minutes before. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. So, you want to go ahead? Nope, go for it. I'll do it. All right. So, it looks like everyone's favorite Samurai Rabbit may be heading to the small screen. Um, although he's been on the small screen before, but we'll get to that later. Um, news reports have confirmed Usagi Ujimbo has been optioned by Galmont for an animated television series. The comic, which debuted nearly 30 years ago, comes from the creative mind of Stan Sakai. The creator will act as a co-producer on the animated series alongside uh, Galmont, that's, uh, James Wands. That's Stan Sakai. I said that. I know. I I usually I'm correcting you, so I was correcting you. Oh. <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> His joke is funny! <laughs> um, James Wan's Atomic Monster with Rob Hackett overseeing for the company and two executives from Dark Horse Entertainment, Mike Richardson and Keith Goldberg. I'll have to make sure I mess up one of these um, names. Normal soon. names. 
Yeah. Uh, they will serve as executive producer while Chris Tork. No. That's that's tongue. <laughs> tongue. There you go. There you go. I had to give. I gave you one. Co-producer. Executive co-producer. I'm sorry. Co-executive producer. There we go. One of those orders is correct. One of those. You just take those three words and just jumble them up. They pretty much mean the same thing. Um, Yusagi Yojimbo has been a much sought after. Has been much sought after for many years, and we are honored to work with Stan Sakai to translate his multi-generational stories into the first ever TV series. Nicholas um, Atlan said. Yusagi. <laughs> I mean, uh -huh. if it's if they're talking about his own show, then yeah, sure, it's the first. Yeah, but... for his own show. Okay, so we'll go ahead and say it now. He's been in almost every version of the Ninja Turtle show. He's one, of, he's one of my favorites. Uh, if I went back to the house, I don't know if uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if my mom has all the Ninja Turtles or my brother does. I think my brother may have them. Uh, but we had two of those. Uh, do you remember those cube crates? The toy crates. That would have like the snap closed tops, and it was it was mm -hmm. a cube. We had two of those with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in them. We had the van and the uh, the the drill. Oh, I had the drill. The drill. The, drill uh, the thing the that they came thing. up out of the ground. Yeah. Out? Yeah. Um, you know, Krang and all them, Bebop, Rocksteady, but um, probably my favorites were Usagi Ujimbo and uh, the undercover Donatello I had, where he was in a trench coat and a fedora. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. pretty awesome. I think I had um, I had a Donatello oh. where he was just the superhero. We had the Remember that one. We had the pizza shooter too. The big vehicle, oh, the, yeah, that shoots. Yeah. It shoots the pizza discs. We used to shoot those at each other all the time. It was hilarious. No, I had I had so I had the, I had the uh, I had the turtle van. I had the Technodrome, and I had the the blimp. Oh, you had the Technodrome. That thing was huge. I think my yeah, cousin, was, my cousin big. had it, but man, I wish I kept those toys. I wish I, I regret not. Like, I don't know what happened to him. I think my parents just got rid of him or something. So when my when my uh, when my mom had moved, she had said that she had given him to my brother. So maybe when I maybe when I see him in a couple of weeks, I'll have to go raid the basement if it's down there. <laughs> see if I can you find go, at least a couple of them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But um, that uh, that blimp one was the coolest. I loved it. I remember the so, blimp too. Yeah. So. Um, Yusagi Yojimbo's you blend of history and mythology, clever balance between action and comedy, and real-world touch points combined with the supernatural, uh, together with the com the passionate fan base that Stan has already amassed, makes this an incredibly exciting property to develop with our partners, Atomic Monster and Dark Horse Entertainment. I think this has been overdue for like 30 years. Probably. Years. Well, they did say uh, most are uh, much sought after for many years. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wonder why it's been held up. I wonder if he was just like waiting, biding his time, or or maybe I don't know. maybe he was one of those creators that figured he was done with it and that he thinks that he did the fitting end and didn't want to destroy what he had created. How old is Stan Sakai now? Oh well, let's see. This is about 30 years old, so even if he started when he was like 19 or 20, that's about 50. He's 64. Mm. And so this makes, yeah, from Kyoto. Kind of like the Calvin and Hobbes thing, where he uh, refused to let do anything beyond his comic. Right. Yeah, you know, And he, he even used to go into bookstores and like autograph random books until he saw people selling them online. They yeah. quit doing that. Because he's like, Really big anti merchandise, which stinks because which that stinks, would have been really yes. awesome to just all of a sudden take home a book and hey look it's got the it's got the signature of the guy who made the damn thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it was really nice and you know he he hates interviews and all this stuff. But anyway, so um, Sakai also shared his personal thoughts about Usagi move to television. The artist said he gets fan mail frequently asking if his comic will get its own TV series, and Sakai thinks the creative talent working on the show is top-notch. Uh, if you are not familiar with Yusagi Yojimbo, it is set in a fantastical world that reimagines 17th century Japan using an array of anthropomorphic characters. An anthropomorphic. I said it. I said that right. No, it sounded like you messed it up. I'm Maybe just so, I did mess I'm it up. I'm just so used know. to I'm... correcting you. 
<laughs> Here's the thing. I know these words. I just can't say these words. It makes me feel dumb whenever I talk. Let's get the guy that can't talk good on a podcast, an audio podcast. I told you I was just using you for your art. <laughs> Which I don't provide anymore. I'm so lazy these days. Um, so the series follows a Ronin rabbit named Miyamoto Yusagi as he explores his country's outer limits and goes on episodic journeys. The series has been praised for its immersive world building and use of traditional Japanese folktales. Its titular hero often ranks as a top comic, po- comic book protagonist, and Yusagi has even guested in various TV programs in the past. In fact, the character has uh, appeared in all three of the animated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series with his first outing dated ba- yeah. dating back in 1987. Wow. So I am <laughs> absolutely pumped for this. I think it's going to be really fun. And it, like, he, like he said, it's already got a solid fan base, but because they've never really had anything, he's they're, hopefully they're not so rabid that they... Uh, Tear it apart. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, well, they would've should, they should have done it this way. And it's like, well, this is the first time they're doing it, so this is how they should do it, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, they they got to give it a chance. You're right. And the other great thing is, is as, long as, uh, as long as I like it as much as uh, I think I'm going to, I think it'll be great to show the kids, too, because, you know, they like that kind of stuff, too. Um, yeah. Plus the uh, the fact you know the fact of the matter of the uh, the combination of the history and the mythology being mixed in is a really really useful tool for teaching as well. Even though the mm-hmm. kids don't know they're learning something, maybe they'll absorb some of the stuff. I mean that's how I learned most of the crap I know is just yeah. watching things and and absorbing it. So even though I didn't I'll give know you I was a, going to, I'll give you the perfect example. Is I was watching uh, playing the old Animaniacs. Uh, songs oh. <laughs> for for my daughter the other day. Obviously, they're still too above her, but like they have the Ballad of Magellan where they discuss Magellan's journey around the world and getting stabbed and stuff. Yep. So it's, you know, there's ways of doing it without it being terrible. <laughs> terrible entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah, school-like. yeah like school-like. Uh, yeah. How about that schoolhouse rock, though? <laughs> I don't know. I like some of them, but as a kid, they kind of annoyed me yeah yeah i don't know i was i'm, I'm i was a weird kid I'm a, um so you know i don't want to like get off on tangents here but i actually watched the old pitches for sesame street Wait, last night did you guys hear that he said he doesn't want to get off any wild I, do, I never want to <laughs> i never want to but i do we all know the truth I'm, it's okay buddy so um yeah so yeah i'm gonna stop myself there but it was just it's just really weird to see like Rolf trying to get Sesame Street started and Rolf being the lead of the Muppets and Kermit was kinda of like the second banana in a way. You know, I read a uh uh I think it was a recent tweet. Um mm-hmm. was it Frank Oz? Or something like that. He had he had quoted uh Jim Henson saying I never, I never created the Muppets for, you know, kids. That was never no. the intention. Yeah. But it, was it always just happened like... that it just yeah. happened that it fit for all audiences mm-hmm. rather than just the adults or just kids. And I mean, if you go yeah. back and you watch the old Muppet stuff, that's why I really wanted the new Muppets show to actually be really good because the old one was really good. They did it really well, and it wasn't just something that was aimed at me as a kid because. I still go back and watch that stuff. Well, let's put it this way. I, I well, I enjoyed the new Muppet show. Yeah, it was kind of like the office-y, maybe a little too much, but um, and yeah, and that's one reason he created the Muppet shows because he was worried that um, Sesame Street was going to pigeonhole him. Yeah, you uh, you've so seen he, the you've seen the Office before. Yes, <laughs> yes I have. Not not that big of a fan of most of the characters. Yeah. And then, like, the main characters, Peg, or Pam, and Pam. what her... Pam and Jim. And the, the, Jim, Jim. I don't Pam. care about them. I don't like them. Really? Yeah. I, I just find them boring. We like, different. his pranks and stuff are fun. They're hilarious. But, like, I <laughs> don't like, like a, It's just like, these are... There's a 10-minute uh, montage of him pranking Dwight on Facebook, or on YouTube. Yeah. 
But anyways, now about anyways. those wild tangents. <laughs> okay, yeah, about those wild tangents. So, uh, talking about that the Muppets were supposed to be for uh, all ages or at least a mature audience, the pilot episode of The Muppet Show was called Sex and Violence. But that was the original pitch. Right. Yep, so uh, there's that. So anyways, so you saw your Jimbo. Let's get... Uh, I'm really pumped for this. I th- Hopefully, I mean, like I said, the fan base is there. We're part of the fan base because apparently part of every fan base, it seems like. I wonder um, if I wonder if by what you were talking about with Atomic Puppet, that maybe uh, Galmont's deal is with Disney XD and the Teletoon. Teletoon is the Canadian thing, but uh, mm-hmm. maybe their deal is also to distribute to Disney XD, which means maybe it'll go on there, which means we didn't put it on here. But uh, we'll we'll talk about it when we get to the movies and TV because there's some information that was released about the the Disney thing. Oh so. yeah, I think I know that. Yeah, maybe. So. Anyways, so that's all I've got for here. The only problem is like with it being Disney XD, even though they have darker aspects to some of the shows, like Gravity Falls and others. Um, that's a potential that of Henry listen, listen. Action. My kid watches that show. And uh-huh. after watching the mini golf show, I don't think I should let my kid watch that show anymore. <laughs> that is a really dark episode. I was not expecting it, and it was just one of those that I watched out of the blue because he had put it on, and I was like, "What? The- These things want to kill that girl like bad." <laughs> well, they and want, then, they or like the when they did the when they did the John Henry thing. Yeah. Oh my god! I was like, "No, this is not something my kid should be watching." <laughs> But it's really good. It That's the weird though. thing, because it goes over his head. And, you know, yeah. he just thinks it, it was them trying to be funny or something. But I was like, this isn't really something that's really that funny. <laughs> uh, it's, so. I mean, it's hilarious in that, like, dark humor type of way. Yeah. Where, like, dude's sacrificing his life for a sticker. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, anything else on this, or? No, because we're just going to go on these random tangents again. I guess. Oh, this other episode I watched of a completely you know what we irrelevant do? show. One week we should just do a tangents episode. We'll I, just every week we'll do tangents. We'll do one story and then everything else will be tangents. It'll be perfect. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go ahead and move to the movies and TV then. Let's turn that up a little. All right, I'm gonna stop touching stuff on my desk. And I like touching stuff on my desk, though. The uh, the solo trailer dropped during the uh, Super Bowl this past weekend or last weekend. Mm. My bad. This is this past weekend. Um, and uh, I don't really feel too moved by it like I did with Rogue One. I don't. It's it's whoever cut the trailer didn't make it to where I wanted to go see it. You know what I mean? We've always talked yeah. about that before on the show where trailers, you know, the the directors complain that, that and most times they're right, the the guys that cut the trailers are crap. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to grab. They don't know the material, so they're just grabbing, oh, this looks exciting, this looks exciting. Show this. This is, here's a boring part to talk about. So, in a way, I kind of want to give it that chance because it is a Star Wars movie, but I'm almost wondering if it's going to be another flop. And, you know, I could be wrong. Yeah. Well, it's not going to be a flop. It's going to totally make its money. That's the thing. It's, oh. If it's going to be like a flop with the fan base. Like that's that's what I mean. Are. I mean, yeah. it's Disney and it's Star Wars. Uh, it's kind of like Disney and Marvel. It's going to make money. Uh, oh, Black Panther comes out this week. Um, well, <laughs> we don't have to worry about that being a critical. It's already been like locked in stone that it has to be good. Apparently, yeah. yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk about that next week. Uh, we'll make sure that makes the notes. Uh, but anyways, we're talking about this. Uh, so you, sh- they, they give you the showing of uh, Han Solo signing up to join the Empire, which uh, I don't think a lot of people on the surface really know that that's exactly what he did before he became a smuggler. So that's kind of neat because they're building on that mm-hmm. character uh, uh, mythos, which is really cool. Uh, you Based off see that the established of canon, which make yeah, yeah which we, we've talked about is being like loyal to the, uh, you know, well to the fan base for giving them nods while adjusting it for new stuff. Right, I and, absolutely. There, and it's it's one of those things because that's part of while it's part of the known canon of uh, Han Solo, 
I wonder how much of the book canon they'll bring into it. Uh, because there was some of that covered in some of the books, too, here and there. Um, and, and we've always talked about that, you know. They, they threw away, they threw away that, uh, that canon from the books, from the extended universe. So, uh, they have all that material to work with. Once again, we'll see if they pull from it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Remember, you got, with, with this, with the expanded universe, they absolutely had the chance to, like, trim the fat, keep all the delicious meat. And it seems like with, like, the last movie that just got released, they just kept the rotted, gross, greasy fat parts. <laughs> Or the meat that they did cut, like, hey, let's have Han Solo and Leia's kid become evil. You know, they they took that meat, but they forgot they left it out in the sun for about three years, and it's been rotted and turned green and purple and stuff. Yeah. And now they're like, oh well, this is what we got to work with. So anyway, so with this, yeah, so with the solo trailer, it seems like just so middle of the road and overwhelmingly bland. It was like. Mostly shots of people standing. Yeah, it wasn't. It didn't really show much. It was like, like above board super teaser. Yeah, it's like somewhere in between teaser trailer and trailer. And uh, I just watched. Isn't the re- the release date's May twenty fifth? Isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's not summer. January, it's, February, March, April, May. It's yeah. Uh, Eight, however, however, I think uh, what episode nine comes out close to the the original release date in May. Um but it's uh but it's yeah, it's it's like it's not a main it's not a main story so it won't get that close. I mean that's as close as it'll get. Mm-hmm. Uh so what is it IX, right? Yeah, so IX. IX release date. What? Now. What year is it? December it's, 19, oh, it's gonna right come now. out December twentieth, two thousand nineteen. I thought it was gonna be sooner than that. We're gonna go a whole year and a half without a Star Wars movie. Awesome. Eh, we might That's, need it. Yeah, I was gonna say that I'm I'm not upset with that. Yeah. And I like to see JJ what? Abrams all over it because this last one. Okay. Yeah. How can JJ JJ Abrams only knows how to ask questions? He doesn't know how to answer anything. <laughs> So, and then you'll have oh to see God, the next. Don't even see get me started movie. in this, huh? You'll have to see the next movie to get that. And then <laughs> half of his half of his questions were thrown out with the last movie. They weren't expanded upon in any real way. I'm, don't even get me started with this freaking trilogy. Okay. Which, um, real quick. So yeah, so the solo trailer was really, really, really mediocre. The other thing I want to add in is that it's come out that the creators of the Game of Thrones for TV series. Oh, it's yeah. going to be directing a trilogy. You saw that, right? Yeah, they're going to be part of the yeah the part of the new trilogy, the unrelated to Skywalker trilogy. Yeah, which what is what Ryan Johnson probably should have done. But at the same time, these guys are experts of butchering established continuity well, and a story. Make, okay, making a really abridged version. There, those those guys are only doing writing and producing. Ryan Johnson is doing the the first movie of that new series. Which they should not allow him to do. They need to cut that contract right now because that dude does not have any clue at basic story structure, much less how to handle a Star Wars film, it seems like. Right. But what do you have before? Jumper or something? Looper, right? Looper. Yeah, Looper was his, uh, along with a handful of others. Um, and some people liked this stuff, some people didn't. Apparently, I spelled Ryan wrong, and so did he. It's R I A N. Yeah, I put the A I. Uh, Ryan Johnson, uh, feminist filmmaker. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, I mean, <laughs> that's not uh, wrong. Brick, the Brothers Bloom, Looper. What? No. Oh, he was an actor. This he was the... an Imperial technician in Rogue One. I was like, he didn't direct that. That was a good movie. <laughs> so, so here's here, so here's the crazy thing. Oh, wait a minute. That... Wait a minute. This explains it. He directed the Fly movie in Breaking Bad. Quite possibly the worst episode. And then he also directed one of the best, which was Ozymandias. That was a good episode. Um, uh, Barking yeah. Clocks right twice a day. I, yeah, I know, I know. And then he did a couple episodes of uh, BoJack Horseman and an episode of t- uh, Terriers, which wasn't bad. It had uh, the guy that plays Harvey Bullock in the Gotham show playing a hard-boiled detective, like... 
private investigator type like thing. Harvey, so Harvey Bullock. No, no, no. But no, no, without no. the badge? Yeah, well, more of a I don't give a crap kind of private investigator. So, so Harvey Bullock, nah. but without the badge. Yeah, well, um, and the corruption. He wasn't really corrupt. He was just, I don't give a crap. Harvey was, well, Harvey's uh, corrupt. Ha- in, 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 in Gotham. Gotham, he's corrupt. Yeah. In the actual canon of the comics, he's not corrupt. Yeah, he's, he's just, I don't give a crap. Yeah, he hates Batman, but that's because he doesn't like, one, Batman making the cops look bad, and two, uh, the crazies that Batman attracts, among other things. And creates. Attracts slash creates. <laughs> attracts slash creates. Okay. He's really only created the one. Except in, two, maybe. except in Gotham, he hasn't created any. So. No, no. I can't wait. I can't wait for Batman to show up and start beating up on geriatric sixty-year-olds or something, making out with a sixty-year-old cat woman. That's going to be hot. Oh. She's going to call herself Cougar Lady. Isn't that <laughs> the joke we made before? That's hilarious. Uh, all right. Uh, anything else on uh, Solo? Um. Well, Solo looks mediocre. Hopefully, the next trailer. Will- uh, give us some kind of space battle or something, or at or least the show us. Run, that, right? that was the other thing is that they didn't show Han that much. I think the, you, you saw him twice in the thing. You saw like the back of his head. And that was it. Yeah, uh, and it's not like well the picture that I have up too because that's him in the center, isn't it? Yeah, um, but that's just just a weird thing. Is like he's the main character. Yeah, and it's not like you're high. You know, it's not a surprise that he's in this movie. So why? So does that show that they don't have faith in him? I don't know. Uh, once again, uh, the people who cut teasers don't know what they're doing, or trailers for the most part. Yeah. Uh, which is amazing because you know, I feel like uh, the Force Awakens trailers were actually pretty well done. Even the teasers early in, they were really mm-hmm. well done. They built the mystique, yeah. but the ones for like the Return of the Jedi or not Return of the Jedi, oh, God. the Last Jedi, the Last Jedi, and this one are just mediocre at best they look like well, they look like uh they, they look like the next to pull from they look like the next trailer we gotta freaking deal with um, oh yeah let's, so let's go ahead and move on to another media trailer. all right the milk stain movie aka the venom movie coming so, out okay, in October. So, so real quick the this trailer it wasn't necessarily so mediocre as it was generic it could have been any freaking film you could have made this into the Ghost Ghost Rider trailer, or it could have been a, you a, could, a Strain trailer from the TV show The Strain, or Strain, or any zombie vampire film. Twenty eight days later, twenty eight weeks later, <laughs> or Die Hard by Night, or something. I don't know. Um, that was a made up title, by the way. I didn't, I didn't get one of the Die Hard movies wrong, but anyways, so the Venom trailer dropped, and man, yeah, like I said, it's bland. Also. Oh. At the end, when like Wait. he's like freaking. Here it is, what? guys. Here it is. Go for it. Go for it. I know. Oh, you. Okay. Here's your complaint. This is the big complaint, everybody. I've been waiting all week for this complaint. So, the awesome the transition. Venom symbiote doesn't look like that. It doesn't <laughs> live inside of his body. It's his like outerwear because he's not bonded with the symbiote on the level that Carnage and Cletus Cassidy were bonded. <laughs> They're bonded at a genetic level or cellular level. The Venom symbiote is still... That's why he says we are Venom and not I am Venom. Like, he says, I am Carnage. Right. Because they see themselves as one. The Venom symbiote sees themselves... The Venom symbiote and its host usually see itself as separate. Right. So, uh... So, so what there... What does that mean? I know what it means. It means that, uh... That Sony is continuing to mishandle properties and, um... Disney needs to go ahead and fix that problem as well. Because uh, it's like, supposedly and Spider-Man thing, I, exist, exists in this world, so that's bad news for us. Because now we're going to see a Venom that is poorly done involved in a Spider-Man movie eventually. Because you know and, they and, want to. And that's the thing. Even better they is I keep, I keep cutting off when he goes into his rant mode and he keeps frustrating <laughs> him more and more. So he's going to like blow up in a second. All right, go no, ahead. No, <laughs> I'm not going to blow up. I'm trying not to. So here's the other thing. You saw like half a second of the Venom symbiote. You don't see anything of Venom in the trailer. And this isn't like their teaser. It was like a minute and a half long. Two minutes long. It was a minute and a half. A minute 30. It was it a was... minute 46. So 15 seconds worth of credit and uh, studio it should, it, either way, we needed to see Venom in it. 
and not Tom Hardy. And the the thing is, if like if you wanted to show like, oh well, he's being corrupted, you could have had the the Venom symbiote coming out of his his robe along his veins, but not inside of his veins. I know how. And to... Here's the other thing. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, that poster, the spilt milk poster. <laughs> oh my goodness! It's if only like he had a freaking symbol, you know. It's not like he has a massive spider symbol on his chest and he back. Have, he doesn't have a symbol. I mean, look I, at, I guess not. It looks like two milk stains. Look, like look, I cut out the words completely. It's just milk stains. You, you would have thought that you would have said, you know, hey, look, his <laughs> chest insignia. Maybe we should use that as a poster. Oh, no, nobody would get that. Or at least put, like, his teeth on there. His the eyes and the teeth. But it looks like a freaking Rorschach test. Yeah. An inverted one. Yeah. Um, so... I know how to fix. I know how to fix Suicide Squad. You have Tom Hardy play uh, what's his face, um, you know the guy he was supposed to play. <laughs> Tom Hardy. Play? Uh, he backed I out ain't... of that movie. Who was no? He he was playing the uh, the tough looking dude. I can't remember. I didn't pay attention. Killer Croc. No, not Killer Croc. The the guy with the. Hold on. I'll have to look it up. Go ahead and keep complaining. Okay, so anyway, so one, we didn't get to see Venom. We saw part of the symbiote. We saw a, a generic explosion and a motorcycle chase. He was supposed and to. And then that most cliche, oh, our demons are inside of us. Okay. Uh, God, that's like the most basic. Like, it's, it's the equivalent of it was a dark and stormy night. He was supposed to be Captain Boomerang, I think. Oh. I believe. Captain Boomerang up. was supposed to be a big, tough looking guy. He was played by. Jim I mean, Courtney. Captain Boomerang is is cool, but yeah, well, that's who he was, a... he was originally cast as that though. Mm. Uh, he was he backed out. Um, trying to see if I can find where it says, yeah, Tom Hardy. Oh, Tom Hardy was supposed to be Rick Flag. My bad. Oh, okay. Uh, but he so... was too busy with the Revenant, which <laughs> that was a messed up movie. So I kind of feel bad for Tom Hardy because. He actually had to turn off the comments on some of his Venom-related posts because people were making fun of him too much. Well, it's not his fault at this point. It's not his fault. Listen, Tom but... Hardy is a great dire- uh, great actor, but whoever's directing this movie and came up with the concept, uh, at this point, I'm, I'm just assuming Tom Hardy's just making a paycheck at this point. Uh, we all know actors take bad roles. It's when they're involved directly in making those decisions that it kind of messes everything up. Yeah. Then you know they're making bad decisions. Right now he's just making a paycheck, and he's probably making a pretty big one considering it's something that's going to land him multiple movies probably. Wow. So we'll see. If it, yeah, if it goes anywhere. Or we get a reboot and it's somebody else next year. <laughs> and the thing is, I think Tom Hardy would have been a pretty good Venom if they had done this right. Like, they could have easily have, at the if, if Sony had waited... Uh, uh, the rumors are that they're trying to steal c- control back of Spider-Man. When I don't know why they're trying to do this because they get all the profits and Marvel has to do all the legwork. Yeah, Marvel and DC does all the legwork. They get the profit. So let them make out make the quality movies, and you just reap in the benefits. Yeah. So my my thing is, so all they had to do, so in a, Infinity War is obviously going to go into space at some point, either in part one or part two. Easy peasy. Spider-Man gets the black suit in part two. You know what? Comes back to Earth. He has an entire movie, or half a movie, where he gets rid of the Venom symbiote. Oh, guess what? You could totally introduce the Fantastic Four during part two and uh, Spider-Man's Homecoming 2 movie. Now that we've, then, it, now that we've seen how this works, I need to go back and watch that movie that everybody said was probably slash possibly the prequel to Venom. You heard about that, right? It was a movie with Ryan Reynolds. They were bringing something back to Earth that was something weird from outer space. Now I need to go back and take a look at that to see if that is that is what they're doing. I don't remember what it's called, whether it's like Home or something like that. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, type in Ryan Reynolds Home and it's going to pop up. No, you stalker. All right. Uh, filmography. Uh, Life is the name of the movie. It was from last year. 
Is it on Netflix or anything yet? I don't know. I'll have to look later. Science fiction horror, directed by Daniel Espinosa, written by Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Rebecca Ferguson, and Brian Reynolds, who's... Oh, he's already clicked, so he looks a little darker. Uh, unplanned Pilgrim Space Probe is returning from Mars to Earth with a soil sample that might contain evidence of extraterrestrial life. Uh, six members of the ISS capture it and revives a dormant cell from the sample. It quickly grows into a multi-celled organism that American school children name Calvin. I need to, I need to watch this movie and find out because it's a Sony Pictures. There is a lot of talk about it before saying, is this the prequel? Is this how they're doing the prequel to Venom? Uh, life prequel... I spelled prequel to Venom. See, I freaking typed it in and it comes up. Uh, it says the, the ending of life reveals it's not a Venom prequel. But it's Sony, so... I almost don't believe it. It says... So there's two conflicting articles, one from Vulture that says that, and one from Yahoo that says how life really could be the Venom prequel, and why the film's first kill is so shocking. Great. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch this movie now. Hey, guess what? Sony also said that Venom was going to be tied to this Venom movie, was going to be tied into the... So into the Sony's what? full of crap, Adam. Oh, the Marvel. Remember, because Adam Pascal yeah. or, or Amy Pascal, whatever the heck her name is, on stage was like, "Yeah, this totally ties in." And yeah. Kevin Feige sitting there was like, uh, "Are you stupid?" We talked about that. <laughs> uh, and then, I guess after that interview, she quickly had to come back out and say, "No, this is not. This is a standalone." She had got her spanking. Right. All right. Uh, so let's continue to bash the Venom trailer. Anything else? <laughs> um, I mean, well, here's the thing. I would love to bash it some more, but they gave us absolutely nothing to work with. Because, the, I mean, again, you could, you cut off the freaking trailer's name at the end, or beginning or whatever, and right. it could be any basic, like, action movie. With some virological thing going on. Yeah. Uh, uh like, tw what, 12 Monkeys Without the Insanity? Um, Quarantine? Like it could have been quarantine too. I don't. Um, think, I don't have stars. It's streaming on stars right now. Oh, I don't have stars either. All right. Eh. All right. Well, uh, let's talk about another very generic and poorly done trailer. How about that? You want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So this trailer came to a big came as a big surprise. Uh, we kind of knew it was coming and expecting it, but at the same time, we weren't really expecting it, and it came with poorly done CGI. Uh, so much so that while the commercial was being filmed, they finished it. Uh, the uh, Deadpool 2 trailer came out uh, with revealing uh, Cable and his uh, his background and all that good stuff. And there's a nice picture of Sheriff Deadpool taking on Cable. So, I, <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead. I have to say, when they cut to this while the, while the CGI was being done, uh, I couldn't stop laughing because he's like, He's like, activate, uh, what was it? Activate regeneration powers. He's like, you don't yeah. say that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, shut up. Yeah, it's good. It's good monologue between himself and Cable. Uh, also confirming that Ryan Reynolds is psychotic. <laughs> and not only that, but like, here's the thing. For such a stupid gag that they did with him dressed up as Sheriff Deadpool. Like, if you, and I think I posted this somewhere, but. When it shows the the toys' feet, they both have weight on, on the them, bottom. Like, yep. like Andy had written on. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. No, what got me was the uh, the jab at Justice League. He's like, "You didn't finish the arm. It's, like, it's not like doing a mustache." Oh yeah, yeah, you know, that was great. That was, <laughs> that was that was great, and I was like, uh, "So yeah, so it, not only it's taking jabs at Disney, it's taking jabs at Justice League." It, um. You know, it has some great moments in there. Still not a fan of how Domino looks in that. Um, again, it's just like, why didn't you make the white part whiter? It's It just looks like she's like, fell asleep with a piece of ham on her face and she got like more of a tan on her or something. It's weird. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, it looks like we got to see some either, well, Shatterstar's in this. I don't think we knew that before this trailer was released. And 
the other there was another kid. Um, the, if you look at the right of the group shot, it looks like um, initial thoughts were Bishop, um, but people are saying that it might be G W Bridge or Bridges. I forget. Yeah, if it's, G, it's G W right Bridges. I think. Yeah, um, which actually would be a neat setup for like if Cable spins off into his own thing, because in the comics, Cable either directly or indirectly paralyzes bridges <laughs> so he has he's yeah so he wants blood after that but um but i mean like the lot lots of action lots of comedy i love that blind ella's back in there her scene was great <laughs> yeah pointing the gun across that was great across, yeah. he's like he just <laughs> <laughs> moves it over yeah, that was, that was I funny. love that scene. They they uh, they have they have nailed they have nailed Deadpool. That is probably the best yeah. thing that that they ever did was said here. Here's fifty million dollars. Go make it, uh, and let and let them go the way they needed to. Yeah, uh, Ryan Reynolds has been instrumental in making that happen from all from all signs. Uh, yes, and facilitating it as well, being the you know being the actor, but. Not only that, mm-hmm. but like I said, he's like he's sold on the character to the point where sometimes you can't tell the difference between the two. No, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> his uh, especially off his Twitter feed is just absolutely hilarious. And he, uh, you know, I think like all the I don't know. This one is one of the ones that absolutely captures the spirit of the character. Yeah, it's his origin's not exactly the same as the comics, but it captured the spirit of the vast majority of its characters. And that's what I look for. And I know I talk about, I complain about being loyal to the comic and scenes being accurate, but overall it's the spirit of the character. Yeah. And I think, like, you know, only a handful of people have absolutely knocked it out of the park. Even though that number seems like it's steadily growing. Like, Chris Pratt's great, and I love his Star-Lord, but it's not necessarily how Star-Lord originally was. I I think they've kind of, like, moved him. Adapted the character to him. Yeah, I think that I, th- I think they're kind of adapting the character to him. Um, you know, the their Tony Stark, uh, Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark was absolutely on point. Right. Uh, Deadpool was absolutely on point. Um, Wolverine. Wolverine Professor was on X. Point. Yeah. yeah. Um, pretty 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 close. Yeah, pretty well. He was close. It's just like with with the with the Marvel like with the mutant characters especially, they had to tone down their power levels, especially like the telepaths and telekinetics considerably so that's I, that's kind of like a frustrating point for me i understand like you can't have them be the level that they normally need to be right but like it just felt like they were extremely extremely hindered compared to what they could do in the uh the comics and i think that's an aspect of the spirit of the character like if they didn't have the hulk as strong as he was in the avengers movie that would be a problem, you know? Yeah. Because that's a core aspect of the character. If Deadpool couldn't heal, you know? Oh, and I do here, like that. I got a question. Oh, okay. Be- between the two, the two Hulk actors, who do you like better? You know, here's the thing. Um, because I've, I've heard that rumor as well. Um, it doesn't really matter to me. They've both played him fairly well. And technically, there's been three in the films, four... I mean, I mean, of the two that are technically in the that are the in, Marvel the, in the Marvel yeah. Cinematic Universe now, so uh, um, Edward Norton or uh, current Hulk. I think Edward Norton captured. I don't know. Like, I think Ed, Ed, Edward Norton captured his on the on the run paranoia better. Okay, and his his genre savvy. Like when you know when he dumped out her her purse, it was like you can't take any of this stuff. Right, you know, except for like the cash and your lip balm. Okay. Um, I th- uh, so when he was on the run, like like fifty percent of his intelligence was keeping himself, you know, away from the army, and the other fifty percent was like trying to keep the Hulk at bay. Right. And I think that was one of the. Uh, I think that's what he ca- captured. I think. Um, I was gonna say, do you think that the change between the way Edward Norton portrayed him and the way he is now? is a lot different because he's not on the run anymore, yeah. but he's still trying to keep the Hulk down a l- maybe a little bit more than he usually does. He's far more self-destructive now. It feels like he's got, like oh, okay. the, and that's what I was about to say. He's got the, the mental 
illnesses and exhaustion that would be, come from, you know, having to survive day to day while trying to keep yourself from becoming a living weapon of mass destruction because you stubbed your toe, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. So, so I think they captured this. I think they captured the spirit of two of the way the character has been portrayed. I mean, it's, it's I'm, true though. Like, I'm now you know? imagining him walking into a freaking coffee table and just hulking out and <laughs> destroying the living room. <laughs> you know, the thing is at some point I could absolutely see that happening to the Hulk or, or to Bruce. Um, and, here, and here's the thing. Between Bruce Banner and the Hulk, I love the Hulk. So I want to see the Hulk on the screen more. Even if they went back to how Avengers Assemb- not Avengers Assemb- but Earth Mightiest Heroes did him, where he was Hulk 90% of the time, but they had the original Hulk where he was more snarky and deadpan hmm. as opposed to dumb, raging monster type. The man, the raging, psychotic man-child Hulk. Okay. Um, because that's how he was originally portrayed in the comics. Is like He was just like... A really angrier version and snarkier version of Bruce Banner. Okay. So I really enjoy that portrayal too, and I would like to see that make a comeback in the movies. Maybe when we finally get Planet Hulk. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we will we'll never get Planet Hulk. No. Thor yeah. Ragnarok. Yeah. Thanks, Thor. And that would have been that would have been a perfect yeah Thanks. that would have been like a perfect segue for it too. If 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 Mark Ruffalo uh, wants to get out. They just have the Hulk. All the, the only thing is, they just can't afford to have the Hulk in every scene, because that's a lot of that's a lot of CGI money. Yeah, yeah, that is. But it's and Disney, you, and they you know they laugh yeah. at money. I mean, yeah, they I laugh. Mean, they laugh they in could money. Afford it. <laughs> they laugh. They do money. laugh at money. <laughs> um, and the other thing is, like, you kind of have to save the Hulk unless you do like in Civil War, where he uh, just went on a rage. Not Civil War. Um. um Age of Ultron, when Age he went Ultron, on a rage, yeah. and they had to throw everything they could just to sl- to stop him for a minute. Which was really neat because it gave you that it gave you that idea of exactly what he could do if he was out of control. Yeah, and and it, and it showed the threat level when like Tony, like I mean, yeah, it the only reason Tony-, Tony won at the end is because the Hulk was coming out of that trance because like at the end he pauses and like like the reality sets back in on him. Well, He's like, oh my god, what have I done? The worst thing is, though, is that it does exactly what you would be upset about. Is that It feeds Tony's paranoia and vo- it validates his paranoia and the reason why he's so he was so for the, uh, like, in the in the comics, the Mutant Registration Act and all that. The, well, you not, know, not the, the Civil War stuff. Yeah, uh, well, with that one, they've, are, they've always known that. Though. They've always known that the Hulk is a risk. Yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why. Instead of doing the smart thing, and when he like goes to the middle of Alaska or Canada to be alone, they come in antagonizing, and that's why he kicks their butts half the time. It's because they're coming to antagonize him. Yeah, and and, and I'm. I mean, I'm making my. I'm, I'm trying to get to my point here. Is that that's an exception to the rule when like if you look back at all the events that led up in the films to the Hero Registration Act, it was always caused by an outside source. You know, right. hey, Harlem got destroyed by the Hulk, an abomination. Yeah, because the U.S. Army, or I think, it was, <laughs> I think they wrote him as Air Force in that one, or whatever, um, you know, the military, DOD, antagonized the Hulk by making another Hulk, or a super soldier that turned into an evil Hulk. Right. That's why you lost Harlem. Hey, what about the Ultron incident? Okay, well, that's kind of on us, but guess what? That was still based off an alien incident, half of it. Right. You know, you guys, yeah. The Also, the world government tried to nuke New York City when the Avengers were doing a very good job at containing and pushing the, the alien invaders out of the way. So, right. like, every incident they tried to portray in, in Civil War, it could be anybody with a basic level... Um, the baiting skills could have spun that and turned it back on. Okay, well, hey, we saved, uh, we saved that city. We say, you know, Hulk saved Harlem. You didn't do anything, General Ross. Um, that incident with the bomb Excuse went me. off. Thunderbolt. No. <laughs> that's his nickname. I know. <laughs> um, so you know that that bomb with the Scarlet Witch, uh, she minimized casualties because that bomb was going to kill. Potentially up to a thousand people. She it only killed a few dozen, right? Because she managed to contain it at the last possible second. Why not blame the suicide bomber, right? Crossbones. 
You know, and that was a sanctioned ter- uh, um, attack that the Avengers were doing. The extremist program, another Ex- government pro- or government slash individual contracting program. Yeah, that's yeah. I you know as much as people didn't like Iron Man three, I really liked that storyline. Extremist was a uh, really neat, uh, more more akin to them chasing the super soldier serum again, but yeah. But still, I mean the, the 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 effects of it, what it did, uh, mm-hmm. what we got out of it, which we haven't seen hide nor hair though. Supposedly, she's been lurking around the, uh, or was lurking around the Infinity War set. So, so, so yeah. So here's the other thing with the extremists. I kind of am glad they changed it because they just basically in the comics it was just just generic racist redneck that got the extremist uh, serum. And weaponized himself. So it was a really bland story overall. Um, right. So I, I kind of like how they changed up. It's just, I don't know. It's like, they, I don't know what they would, where it went wrong, but somewhere it went wrong. I mean, I guess forcing like the Iron Patriot into it and everything was too much. Um, <laughs> but, and you, and you know, it makes sense for them once they got Captain America back that they would want to go back into the super soldier program. Cause Holy crap, you see what he can do. Yeah. You know, that like you don't have the old footage reels anymore. It could be propaganda. You actually see what this guy is capable of taking on gods and high tech and, you know, walking tanks like Iron Man. You know, <laughs> I would really love to have seen him go against the Hulk for a little bit. That would have been cool. Yeah. But it would have been pretty much like the fight with, uh, Blonsky. So, yeah. Um, all right. Well, well uh, we kind of got off the subject. That was supposed to be about Deadpool 2. Deadpool 2 looks interesting, and it comes out soon, and I want to see it. And I might have to go see it um, by myself. <laughs> well, uh, maybe we should meet halfway. Um, all right. Uh, let's go ahead and hit this last thing, uh, which is actually kind of cool, uh, because I think Amazon is doing a lot of great things with TV series they're doing, and I can't wait for, like... Uh, during the Super Bowl, we got a new trailer for Jack Ryan, which looks really good with, uh, uh, what was it, John Krasinski from The Office, who plays Jim. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was, he and, uh, he and his buddy, uh, Roy from the, the, the docks downstairs, uh, they did really good in that, uh, was it 11th Hour or whatever, the, the Benghazi movie? It was a really good movie. They both played some of the Special Forces, uh, uh, operators so but uh this this looks like it'll be it, i think it's it seems like he really liked what he did in that movie and wants to continue that because this looks like a, another continuation of the tactical espionage mm-hmm. that happens in the uh the jack ryan series but anyways we're not here to talk about that we're here to talk about conan the barbarian and this awesome logo that i could find because they didn't have one yet uh amazon uh deadline says that the new conan the barbarian show will Retell the classic character's story via return to his literary origins. Driven out of his tribal homelands, Conan wanders the mysteries and treacherous mysterious. the mysterious and treacherous world of civilization, where he searches for purpose in a place that rejects him as a mindless savage. Uh, the uh, colony co-creator Ryan Condal. I don't like when they make things called just a word instead of the in front of them because it sounds yeah. awkward to say and you say the yeah. the anyways uh game of thrones director miguel Sap- S- sapiknik uh fargo and the handmaid's tale executive producer warren littlefield are on board for the series with pathfinder media and endeavor content uh deadline goes on to say that condal has a bit of personal obsession with the material uh sapiknik also has been a longtime fan of Conan the Barbarian story uh, leading to their collaboration. Reportedly, the ultimate goal for the pair is to return to the original Robert E. Howard literary works and produce a series that is faithful to the spirit of his Conan character. Now, question is, who do they get to play him? They've got to get somebody massive. Oh, we're looking at like a kind of Drago type. Yeah, I was going to say, Jason Momoa Jason Momoa's one. He would have been absolutely perfect for the role, I think, with his size, the hair, and the basic attitude. Basically, that's kind of what Conan was, was like a cow drugger 
anti-hero with certain amounts of standards, you know? And he because he mostly kills people that are truly evil or attack him first, you know? Right. I wish I had that. One of my favorite sound bites is the uh, the Conan what is good in life. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a it's such a great one. We used to we used to go back and forth in that, me and one of my buddies. Uh, but but yeah, um should be interesting. Especially if they go back to the 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 literary works and try and be more faithful to it. I mean, I know movies always take a uh, what do they call that? Creative liberalism or creative yeah. license with with creative material. license because again, the pace of a book is not the same as the pace of a movie or even the pace of a TV show. Well, you can't. And, and they show that, and and that's the good thing is is they have uh, one of the directors from Game of Thrones who has you know eyes on knowledge of what the books look like versus what they're actually putting on film to try and fill the gaps and make it entertaining while still keeping to the story as much as possible. And the other thing is Conan, unlike Game of Thrones, which is uh, not necessarily a day by day, you know, right. Um, series of events. This is like, okay, well this year Conan did this. Oh, well these few months out of that year, he also did this. It's like, a series of random adventures um, as opposed to, or his travels. Right. So they're more disconnected, so to speak. Right. So, as opposed to an overall plot. But to make the longevity of a show, they're going to have to have some overarching conflict that'll have to be tied together through maybe not necessarily the results or events that happen during each episode, but something else that happens either behind the scenes or crossing paths with the the big bad eventually through the through the story and being yeah. very disconnected which kind of hurts the idea of having an overarching so a great example of how this is done wrong just go watch Star Trek Discovery because they're they're doing it they're doing it amazingly they have this huge overarching thing that is continuously up front and center uh, in the in the show, which really breaks the Star Trek formula, and I guess if that's what they're going for, great for them. But I would I would prefer to have yeah okay they have this lingering thing, but not every episode's you know dealing with it. And the problem is is that CBS, for lack of better words, half-assed it and said we're only going to do 15 episodes or 16 episodes instead of doing a full season uh, because it it. To me, it feels like they don't have faith in the material. Yeah, um, that's that's uh, that's a discussion for another day, really, about this. I know. all the things they got wrong. I know with uh, Star Trek but, Discovery, but but yes, it's a, it's a great example of what not to do. So with Conan, there's there's plenty of longevity there. Yeah, you can have a, like each season have an overarching plot, and the thing is like. It's not necessarily that Conan, like, while his adventures can be random, he does go from a barbarian hero, a hot-headed barbarian hero, to an actual hero and a king. And so you can have that arc there. And it doesn't that doesn't have to take a season. That could take two or three seasons, four seasons. You're right. Because he still adventures and fights and protects people as king because he's Conan the barbarian, and he is a very hands-on king, and he can be, you know? <laughs> Um, just think of him as the Fable Three King. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, without magic, he does not like magic, and he's naturally from, he's a, from a race of people that have naturally superhuman strength. So, um, and even then, he is uh, stronger than their average warrior. So than the he, average bear too, right? And I mean, you know, and that's the other thing. He's surprisingly fast for his size because he's usually written what like six and a half feet tall or seven i don't know how big his uh average height is um but he is considered like a lightning bruiser of sorts <laughs> so there's bruiser. plenty yeah you know not uh, not just no i hit by a tank I, I yeah okay um so so we i mean we've got plenty of things and there's plenty of there's plenty of bad guys floating around both in the original stories and the expanded universe through the comics and everything for him to fight Right, and it could be that you know, you know, and I could I could easily see this being, uh, I don't know, like not just two or three seasons, but six or seven 
and this would be a great uh, if you get the, the right actor in there and the right tones and stuff. You could abs- I could absolutely see this being like a five or six or ten season series where it ends with him as king. It, it, just as long as they understand, they need to pace themselves. I think I don't want you know. I just don't. I'm afraid that they are going to try to rush themselves. Right. Too fast. Uh, yeah. Um, but see, that's the problem. Therein lies the problem. When you're talking about TV, they want return. They don't want the long game. So that's why I said maybe Amazon's a better place for it because some of that stuff mm-hmm. is great. Like Man in the High Castle is nothing less than s- stellar. Uh, it is an amazing show. Um, I still need to go back and f- start watching uh, the... Uh, the Philip K. Dick series. I think it's uh, Do Robots Dream of Electric Sheep, which is a mm-hmm. anthology series. So it's a bunch of different stories. It's not it's not Blade Runner's story. It is a bunch of other works by Philip K. Dick. So uh, I I tried starting to watch it, but it was it wasn't that I wasn't interested. It was I was distracted or something. Something was going on. Uh, but very very uh, highly recommended show. So I'm gonna have to take a look at that. But uh, they they've been they've been knocking it out of the park anyways, uh, Amazon with some of their new series. So yeah, they, they've actually uh, they absolutely can put together the budget. They can put together the rating that Conan needs because Conan needs an R rating or whatever the equivalent for TV that is. Right. Um, it has to be like the HBO quality that at at least with Conan, Conan. Um, you know, and again they can just have a series of overarching villains. Hey, yeah, he takes down the big bad of the first season, but guess what? That big bad was only one of the lieutenants of the overarching big bad, so he it's just starting, goes... This is starting to sound like a D&D adventure. Yeah, <laughs> you know? And <laughs> what do you think? D, some of the stuff D and D and is based off. I know. Exactly. Um, you know, and but that's, I mean, that's just the kind of thing that you're going to do. Even if you have it set up at the end where he is king, even if you do that by the second season or the third season, he's still got that insatiable urge for adventure and riches and battle and conquering. So you can totally still go places with that if you want. Or have him dethroned, even though that's kind of sucky. But, um, you know, I, I, I see, like, massive potential with this series. Um, there's, there's a reason it's been, what, when's, when were these books originally published? Uh, hold on, I'm going to look it up quick. Um, ni- uh, 1930s. So what we're looking at, uh, 80 years? Yeah. Close to 80 years now, right? Uh, close to 90, right? You said 30. Closer to 90. Well, uh, let's round it up to 100. I mean, these, Conan's been around for almost 100 years. There's a reason that he's lasted this long and been incredibly popular. So, I'm totally I'm totally pumped for this. And like you said, um, there's some... That they've done the tick, and I think they've done pretty well with the tick overall. It shows, 60, I like, it shows 67 as the original. Robert. Created in the 1930s for Weird Tales magazine. Oh, interesting. Okay, then yeah. this must just be the okay. This is just the books when they were published. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's well. um, back in the day, kiddies, that you used to get magazines that would have like a chapter every magazine, kind of like how some oh comics are published. <laughs> are you condescending? Oh, they'd be short to me? stories. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm talking to. I mean, if you if you weren't aware of that, then there might be a bunch of people that aren't aren't aware of that. Or even if you know. Some of our audience might not know. It's a nice little history thing. That's why you see all these, like when they do like collections like H.P. Lovecraft and stuff, you know, there's random novels in there, and then there's sometimes there's like a three or four page, yep, in that very collection. That's thick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're going to find a dozen short stories that he just wrote for magazines. Yeah, uh, and, and that's, this book's been pretty fun so far. Uh, very dark, though. <laughs> Obviously, now, but I'm trying to see. Now here's now here's the fun thing is that Robert E. Howard and Lovecraft kind of like took ideas from each other because they had a friendship. Uh, you said you said Howard and Lovecraft. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lovecraft was uh, probably one of the most prolific letter writers. Uh, mm-hmm. Had lots of people that he wrote to, traded stories with. Um, he spent a lot of time just writing stories that were published in magazines here and there. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot of fact, good stuff in there the in the foreword about him. So, yeah, um, Conan is yeah actually usually considered a part of the Cthulhu mythos in really? a way. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that because they they've uh, their canon kind of not necessarily lines up, but like aspects of them come back and forth, like the Necronomicon, um, serpents in there, all kinds of stuff. So it's uh, pretty interesting. But gotcha. Yeah. All but right. the, also, the other line is you have to be careful because Conan in a lot of his books were was kind of a Marty Stew, basically the flawless <laughs> hero that was always right, even when he's slaughtering thousands of people. So they could very well have people call him out on that barbarism. You know, yeah, you, yeah. Uh, you know, what at what cost did you save us? You know, you killed hundreds of thousands and. He is a barbarian, so barbarism yeah, tied I mean, up his wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, when all you have is a hammer, you beat that guy uh, to death with the hammer. All right. Well, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the gaming and wrap this up. Uh, we had a couple of quick articles. Um, let me push this button here. All right, so this will be quick. Uh, World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth uh, Alpha started finally, uh, which means we're on the home stretch for the game uh, to finally come out now that uh, we've had the announcement and the awesome trailer they did and all that good stuff. Uh, with the Since all that information came out, the, with the interview of the game director, Ian Hezekostas, they've he's, he's talked at length. that And he is a... To, to get into his mind before I say this... He has been playing since, I believe, the uh, the base game. Okay, he was a lawyer mm-hmm. by trade, and led one of the biggest guilds in the early days. Okay, that was back when they had forty man raids to uh, to organize. All right, uh, he is now a game designer. <laughs> he went from lawyer to player to game designer. Uh, and everything in between up to that point. Uh, he is going back to the mentality of bring the class, not the player, mm-hmm. which uh, highlights more of the uh, player's ability to manipulate those classes and know which ones are needed for what cases. Uh, back in the day, one of the regular strategies was, was oh, well, we know we need a rogue for this part. So somebody would sacrifice having their character be in for a certain stage in a fight, to go run out, grab his other character, and bring it in to do this section, and then switch back to his other character. Uh, they're trying to trying to make it so these things these things happen again, so that you can nece- you don't necessarily have to do that, but it makes it easier and facilitates those fights a little better. While you can still do it, it may be a little more of a challenge, and you know you might die more, but um, it's one of those sacrifices that used to have to be made, which may herald a little more love from the, especially the classic players, uh, even with the whenever those WoW Classic servers come back. Uh, the other thing is is that uh, they're doing pre-orders right for this uh, this time around and in, in injecting you with content right away uh, when you pre-order the expansion, which won't be out until on or before September 21st, I think, of this year. Uh, there are allied races that you can unlock through reputation and a scenario and then play those characters from level 1 to 100 to which they also, if you do level them from 1 to 100, they have special uh, racial armor bonus, or not armor bonus, but armor sets uh, that go along with their uh, the heritage for that race. Which is really neat because, uh, you know, the, the most you have are like the Horde and Alliance colors and, and armor and stuff like that. Uh, these are unique to each of the races and don't really bear any insignias of whether or not they're Alliance or Horde, even though they've split a couple of the cl- uh, races between the two, and they're n- not the same. Uh, each race before the expansion that can open now, you can open three different allied races. Uh, mostly variations of the some of the ones that are available along with I think one of each that are different than the uh, than the original races, are unique. 
So like, uh, so, yeah. for, so like for the Alliance, Dark Iron Dwarves, the Light Touch Draenei, I think it is, and then, um, crap, I don't remember what the other one is for the Alliance. But the, uh, oh, the Void Elves, which are really cool. They're like, uh, they're somewhere in between the dark. The void elves. They're they're somewhere between the dark elves and the uh, or the night elves and the uh, uh, Those, uh, the blood elves. Sun elves or blood oh, elves. Blood blood elves, blood elves. I was thinking like what's his name? Sun. But they Sun Rider or whatever his name is. Sun Strider, yeah. Kalthos, yeah. yeah. Um. So they but they all have unique abilities too. Uh, unique racials uh, that are really really cool. The void elves, I think they have like a a void shift or something like that, where they can either teleport or. Uh, stealth or something like that. Not stealth, but, you know, plain early stealth. Mm -hmm. um, and the Horde. I don't know if really cares about them, but they have the, the <laughs> Rune Totem Torrens, the, which are from the current expansion. Uh, a, I think, one of, the, one, of the tr one of the other troll tribes, and the the Suramarian Elves. I don't remember what they're called. Uh, they, anyways, uh, so they've got these, these, uh, <laughs> well, that was interesting when I Googled that. Uh, anyways, uh, they, uh. So those trolls are the jungle trolls? Are they? The Gurubashi trolls? Is it Gurubashi? I don't know. Uh, I didn't look into the, uh. Oh, four. Because I was Googling while you were talking. I think that's the, uh, original... Because the trolls used to rule Azeroth. Like, thousands of years before... Yeah, the yeah, Mont they're, they're one seven. of the oldest races. Yeah. Alright, so... It is... Here we go. Uh... Lightforged and I... High Mountain Torin. Those are the Horde and... Uh, the Alliance and the Horde. Uh, Alliance also get Void Elves... The Horde get Nightborn Elves, and Zandalari Trolls. That was it. Yeah, they're one of the oldest ones. And then the Zandalari, Dark Iron, that's it. And then the Dark Iron Dwarves for the uh, for the Alliance. And they look really cool. If you, uh, I'll, uh, I'll. I'm looking at this. the Void Elves, and I'm I'm well, I'm looking at the wrong trolls right now. Their armor looks really cool. Their their racial armor has got these big big wings like mm -hmm. features on their shoulders uh, that are like glowy purple uh yeah so the void things. elves have like a void form right so they're, they're adding a couple of new cool things that uh yeah like uh here you go light forger and i racial passives uh demon bane uh it says experience experience gains for killing demons increased by 20 percent. that's kind of a nice little yeah you spend a lot of time in uh legion killing demons um or the Horde High Mountain Trolls, Pride of the Ironhorn, uh, mining skills increased by 15 per, uh, points and allow you to mine faster, which <laughs> well, there going to be a lot of those miners out there. So they, they're, they're doing some neat things and, and going back to having those those cooler, more valuable uh, racials in the form of those uh, those allied races, which is really cool. Uh, ooh, Rugged Tenacity for the, uh, the, the High Mountain Tauren. Uh, reduced damage by 330. So it also feels like they're going back, and I think they've, they've we mentioned this before, but it seems like they're going back to the roots of WoW, uh, and more and the way well, you were describing stuff in more of the in more ways than one. Well, yeah, I mean we're going back to the this is this is the first time in a long time where they've really focused on the Horde versus the Alliance, um, which which is kind of taken a backseat every time because it's always been a. We need to unite because there's a greater enemy than ourselves. We are now the greater enemies, even though we all know it's still going to end with something else going on. Um, there's been whispers from the uh, the Cthulhu-like beings that exist in the world that are the old influencing gods? the old gods, influencing the Horde and the Alliance leadership, uh, or at least people in prominent positions that have influence on how things are done. Which means that the conflict between the Horde and the Alliance is only amplified because of those old gods, which means that eventually we'll still go back to having the old gods to deal with. 
Um, yeah, which the Burning Legion has been trying to deal with. Yeah, they, the, they've been fighting off that, too. Way. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of cool stuff, and I can't wait till the wife gets back, because I think we're getting back into it by then. <laughs> so, uh... So they've got, yeah, recruit early with pre-purchase. Uh, you can do four of the six. Uh, the Zandalari Trolls and the Dark Iron Dwarves won't happen until after the release. So uh, that, that'll happen for the release. And there's rumors that there are some other ones. The Volpera, which are uh, fox-looking anthropomorphic characters. And uh, there's, I think there's another race that they mine that that may be, uh, may be used as a, an a, an uh, allied race. But we'll see. Uh, they've released a lot of assets and stuff like that from people mining everything. It looks, looks like it's gonna be really cool and excited to get back to that conflict. Um, yeah. And at such a scale that it's actually going to, for future, change the world a little again. So. Well, yeah, and. Really, hopefully they do more with... Uh, uh, yeah, it's building up to the uh, conflict with the old gods because, I mean, they've only been hinting at it for 20 years now, at the very least. Right. If not outright saying it several, several, several times. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just kind of weird. Like, you guys just repelled a alien invasion led by a demonic god... And now you're back at each other's throats for basically no reason, especially with a, a, a relatively pacifist on one side leading the group. So, yeah, so it makes sense that, like, especially if they're, they're manipulating um, Sylvanas, I don't think they could necessarily manipulate. What's, what's the kid's name? Varian. Or not Varian. Varian. Uh, not Varian. Varian. Varian was his dad. Yeah, he's a green puff of smoke now. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and just Anduin. 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 Yeah, it would be because I think with his powers tied to the light, which is, you know, religion, if he went too far away to the dark side or whatever or got corrupted. He wouldn't. He's not really the one. Uh, it, it's. I think, what, so there have been talks that they're influencing the dwarves. Uh, like mm. uh, uh, former King Magni Bronzebeard, who's now a speaker for, the, for Azeroth itself, because mm -hmm. he's a yeah. diamond dwarf now. And uh, Jaina Proudmore, uh, she's gone kind of psychotic, and we're going to her homelands for this expansion. Yeah. So uh, there, there's that. They, they're also doing, I think we talked about it before when we first mentioned this, but they're actually splitting up the leveling experience, and I don't know how that changes later, whether you get access to the other area after you hit 100. But, uh, or 100 and, wait, what level are we now? Uh, 110. 110 last I saw. So 120. When you hit 120, whether you get access to the horde sides uh, environments or not, mm -hmm. uh, which I would assume it, it has to do with phasing and and the battle between the two. If if there's any invasion at either side, um. But uh, from from 110 to 120, you are very unlikely to, unless you go PVP and do those events, you will very unlikely see any of the other side during your leveling experience. Which means you'll just be playing with other people of your your mm -hmm. faction. So that's kind of yeah. interesting and it the isolationism actually builds the conflict. Yeah. So uh because there'll yeah. also be those things of hitting either shore and the whole landscape is changing because the horde will be mo uh completely on Kalimdor and on the western continent and the alliance will be taking over all of the Eastern continent, except for Silver Moon City, where the Blood Elves are. So have <laughs> have the has the Horde lost a major city yet? Like no, but they're about uh, to. the last. Yeah, so the Alliance lost Theramore, right? Yeah, yeah. Jane Jane's place, and it was like that happened a while back. So you thought would have thought that they would have gotten. Yeah. Yeah, you would, you would have thought that uh, something would have happened bad to the horde, but they've seen more or less. Yeah, they lost uh, two war chiefs since then, but one was kind of psychotic. <laughs> um, you you think they would have had like some kind of more substantial losses to balance it out, right? And now our short conversation on this topic has gone far longer than I expected. Um, 
But, I mean, like I said, I'm excited for it because it's, you know, it's another culmination point of everything that's happened before. So, it shall prove to be interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and hit the next thing here, because uh, this is really interesting, too. Uh, mm -hmm. Google is working on a gaming console. Its uh, code name is Yeti, which they always do code name crap, so that's their yep. thing. Uh, it's said to rival the Switch, Xbox One, and the PlayStation 4. Uh, that's where they're aiming to hit. But uh, they're doing something very unique and something that, that Opu here won't like at all. Uh, they're going to be a completely streaming service, which we were talking before the show. Uh, one of the services that did that before was Gamefly, but there was another one. I cannot remember what the name of it was. But I think Sony bought them out and is using them to stream their games that way. For uh, What was that thing we talked about before that was uh, the Sony Classics games that you can play uh, through basically like running an emulator through the... Uh, the PlayStation, but it's like streamed. The games are streamed from there. I can't remember. It's one of their their extra service things that you can get into. It's kind of like the Microsoft Game Pass, mm -hmm. uh, except the Game or like Pass the you EA actually, thing. Yeah, but those you download. I think this PlayStation one is a streamed one. So uh, it's it's an interesting way to do it. But they promise that you will be able to just start playing a game once you purchase it because it'll be streamed off of hardware that is centralized through Google. Um, it's an ambitious plan, and possibly the way that consoles could eventually go anyways. Uh, but, uh, I'm sure it'll be a laugh to start if things don't work off right, but maybe ten years down the road this is where we end up and all the systems are all just streaming stuff on powerful systems that you don't need the, the you know, the home system to work with. They're already trying to figure out how they can run it through the Chromecast TV plug-in. Uh, through that streaming adapter. So here's the thing for me, though, is that it sounds like it's less competing with Xbox One and PS4 and whatever than it is trying to compete with Steam and good old games. Well, see, because they're digital only, but then Xbox is going to have exclusives that you can only play on Xbox. And, and without the whole being able to put a game in there, I don't see like it being a sole competition for them. It feels like it's trying to compete more with the PC, in a way. Because yeah, all my games on my PC are digital. Yeah, and uh, a, a lot of mine are too. At least 191 of them. Um, <laughs> but and and that's the thing. And even still, you go buy a PC disc anymore. It usually is just mm -hmm. a code inside the case, so you have a box. Yeah. And it's like, well, I might as well just buy it online anyways, unless you know there's a discount. But uh, it's 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 an ambitious project to say the least, uh, but it's not impossible. A lot of the things like uh, I think the Nvidia Shield, and there's another one out there that all run Android software, which means they have access to the Android marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, not not Kindle Fire, uh, though that has games on it too. As far as I know, they they already st are able to stream stuff from there. Or I would assume stream because I don't think the fire and the fire sticks have uh, uh, memory space. <sighs> what was I thinking of? Uh, anyways, the Nvidia Shield, you're able to play Android Market games on on your TV. So uh, the uh, and technically, like our Steam Link and things like that actually and the nvidia shield they stream from your computer so it's not uh -huh. terribly far-fetched the only problem is, is when you factor in competitive shooters and stuff like that because yeah. then you have to deal with the latency to the mach the virtual machine you're playing on and the connection to the servers so it feels like that adds in more not only not only the the output to your tv but your input to that system too uh, I don't think our infrastructures can handle that yet. Especially if they're trying to do something like the Chromecast connection. And I think that's probably a hard part for them to deal with because it's wireless and that's more latency you're adding to that link. Uh -huh. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of things that they have to figure out. But it's interesting that they want to jump into this game and compete with those guys and, like you said, not focus on PC, which they should. Um, make a platform 
figure out a way I mean, to work distribution properly and it'll be fine, but it would definitely have to be a system that would work the best when it's plugged into the wall. Yeah. So at least you get up to I, I, that 100 or 1,000 uh, bit processing, or, you know, uh, traffic. I don't know. I think we're going to need more, like, technical specs on what their plan is. It's like, well, it's still in... we make any real calls. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's still, still in, the testing phases and all that blah, 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 developmental phases. So we don't know what they're... We, we just have a general idea of their plans, but it just seems like they're going about it the wrong way. And here's the thing. The X... You know, PS4 already prevents uh, cross-platform play. So there goes yeah. one-third of the multiplayer. The Switch doesn't really have any multiplayer on it. It's two-thirds of it. So then you got the X-Bone. Uh, is, the, uh, is the Microsoft going to allow them to cross-platform with them? I would assume. I, I would have to assume that Microsoft would. Microsoft currently, currently allows cross-platform with... Uh, I guess, was it Rocket League, Minecraft? Mm -hmm. I mean, they do it with a couple of them. I'm just saying, like, they could just as easily say, no, that we're not going to allow the the Amazon box, this Yeti, to crop, cross platform. Yeah, it's but the way they've world, been, the way they've been lately, they've been they've been all for it. So I don't see any yeah. issue with that. It's just PlayStation. PlayStation doesn't like so, to play well with others. Well, uh, like I said, and then when you got the Switch, I don't know what their numbers are, but that's what out of one out of three that you can play with, not counting the PC. Right. Um, and that's going to be all up to, what, individual publishers? Like, if you can play EA games on there. Right. Or you're going to have to sign into 50 different accounts, which I've been dreading. So I'm going to have to sign into... I'm going to log on to the Amazon box, and I'm going to have to sign into the EA account. And then I'm going to have to wait for the game to download and then boot up or whatever. It's, well, not on this, because the, the, Google, the Google thing, you just play because it's already on the machines that they have it running on again you download nothing just, you download nothing mm -hmm. to a system that's their idea it's completely streaming and, and, and that also still sounds bad because again weren't you talking just talking about the latency with it uh, that's what i'm saying that's that's one yeah. of the things they have to get over is the latency yeah. between you and the machine the machine and the servers if it's a multiplayer game and if you're running mm -hmm. wireless that's that much more latency you're adding to it so you're talking about input lag. You're talking about output lag. And to that you. adds up quickly. It does. It really does. And that's why. That's why I said my Steam Link. I have to have wired. Otherwise, the the image oh, yeah. looks crappy and it doesn't. It doesn't uh, translate well with the controller. So, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 we're just gonna have to see what more of their plans are. You know, because I don't see this being that great right now. A single player, then whatever, you're not, you can adapt to that, but it's totally different on multiplayer. Right. And maybe that's why they're trying to say console all this. Maybe that they their first runs of this is like, okay, well, the, the latency between all this stuff equals to roughly the latency on our, on the consoles. So we can link up with them. Right. Right. But I don't know. I don't know. Unless they can, but no, they're wanting a wireless between the Chromecast TV, right? Yeah, the well, the Chromecast, yeah, the Chromecast stick is is wireless. It's there's no connector oh. to it. That oh, okay. it's it's over five G, which is still a little better. But I mean, four K boots up instantly. But I'm not concerned so much about the graphic quality as I am with input lag. Because if you I, tell it to I, move left and then it moves left like a hair later, then you're uh -huh. you're you're behind on a shot. And if yep. you're playing cross platform with other players. They're gonna be that much better. So, yep, yep. Well, oh well. Um, I it's just gonna be a wait and see thing with that. Cause, but right now, I I don't have much faith. In it. Right, it's, especially with streaming, the the game itself online. Gaming consoles. Massive... Are, gaming consoles are quickly becoming the launchers of the gaming console world. <laughs> with the uh, the way you've got Steam and Origin and. Blizzard launcher and all that other crap. I hate, I hate consoles. all these launchers. I hate them all. I, <laughs> I can't stand it. It's it gets old. They don't bother like, me, but most of my stuff's through Steam. So yeah, like most of my stuff's through Steam, but I do have good old games. And else, and, but then I'll buy some games through good old games, and then on Steam, 
it's like, oh, well, you need to buy this game. You need to buy this game. I'm like, I already own this game, and I own this game, and I own this game, but I just have it through a different system or, or service. Yeah. So it just, uh, it just gets, I don't know, just all that little stuff. If And here's the thing. It could be a simple fix if Steam would say, uh, instead of not interested because I don't want my 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 choice type to be affected. Right. Because, you know, if you say, oh, well, I'm not interested in this game, it's going to be, okay, well, you're not interested in platform person at all. Just say, and, and Amazon is implementing this too, is I already own this. So you keep my preferences the same, so I don't have to go readjust anything. Yeah. And you just take that away so I don't get that advertisement anymore. Yeah. Give me other advertisements. Perfect. Exactly. Yeah, I, you know, I'm totally cool with that. I'm totally cool with being bombarded with stuff. I just don't want to see the same exact thing over and over when I already own it. Right. All right. Well, let's hit this last thing. Uh, this one should be relatively short because I, I don't know. It's not that you I don't, don't have interest. It's not that I don't have interest. It's that I don't care. Uh, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts three trailer dropped this week as well. Uh, and uh, a couple of them. Oh, like, there's a couple of them. Okay. Eh. Uh, um. So. What do you so, think? Okay, so they showed a little bit of uh, the Toy Story world. They showed Monsters, Inc., which was a new shop. Um, Soars, Donald's, and Goofy's monster forms. And I got in a massive argument with my wife. She's like, why aren't they human in that? There's humans in the Monster, Inc. world. And I had a counter with, well, they had to turn them into monsters, so there was one less conflict they had in that world. That way they don't have a bunch of monsters reacting to a 2619. Right. You know, humans in, in the monster world are human items in the, in the isn't monster. A isn't it a 2319? 2319, maybe. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was, but, um, but uh, you know, so that's why it turns into monsters. It, the, whatever they use to get to these worlds puts them in the least confrontational form possible. That's why they were animals in the Lion King world. That's why they were fish people in the, or mer people in the Little Mermaid world. Because that's the easiest for them to move around with. Can I interrupt you for a second? Because I just typed yes. that in just to see. It says the uh -huh. signal for CDA 2319 may be a reference to the letters W and S, which are the 23rd and 19th letter of the Latin alphabet. WS might stand for White Sock, a common threat to monsters, which can only be written by the CDA. W and S are the initials of Mike's and Sully's last name. <laughs> That's pretty good. They put way too much thought into that. I know, thing. right? <laughs> That's just... <laughs> All right, continue. All right, so, um, so Little Mermaid crap. So, no, it's just, that's the reason <laughs> it trans, you know, they transformed into uh, monsters in Nightmare Before Christmas world as well, or Halloween Town, I should say. Right. Um, anyway, so, yeah, it looks nice and everything, and it's never going to freaking be released anyway because they pushed back the, the date like 15 times at this point. <laughs> but whatever it, they were okay trailers some interesting combatives and then I only saw it in Japanese without any translation so I have no clue what's going on but then again even with the English dub or with subtitles I have no clue what's going on with <laughs> the uh, Kingdom Hearts plot at this point it was like simple at first and then like they introduced nobodies that were like the soul they didn't have hearts either uh, and it's like what what are you guys going for? And then uh, don't even get me into all the stupid handheld games. So, yeah. oh, Dream Drop Distance or whatever it was. Dream Drop Distance, that three hundred sixty-two over seven squared or whatever. And then there was the, uh, then there was like a five 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 by seven or something. I don't know. It's 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 like the a lot of these names it seems like they just put a bunch of random english words on the board and they just throw darts at it so this sounds good perfect all right we'll yeah. do it like this laundry hot dog nightmare that's the subtitle for Kingdom Hearts. that was pretty good you come up with that off the top of your head which one Doc? the laundry yeah. hot dog nightmare or whatever <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> i'm creative and original sometimes 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 all right well uh that's all we got i think uh that's enough, right? Yeah, that's enough. That's, that's an another, hour and a half long. Another long one. Uh, if you're not happy, come back next week. We'll uh, we'll do more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you you want to punish yourself, right? Right, right. All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, thanks for listening, and those of you who joined us on the uh, live stream, greatly appreciate you guys dropping by. 
Uh, leave us feedback on the show wherever you get it from. And don't forget to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash stasisgeek. Uh, we greatly appreciate any of your input or uh, donations. You can contact us at ECG underscore podcast on Twitter at our Facebook page www.facebook.com slash ECG podcast or email address at ECG podcast at gmail.com. Also, visit us at our webpage, www.stasisgeek.com, or post a comment on the video, and we will totally read it and discuss it amongst ourselves, and then and then we'll continue about our day. <laughs> All right, uh, well, that's it for this week. Uh, we will be back next week. Until then, stay geeky.